Okay, assuming you've already installed and assembled your ECG simulator, right? And if you haven't, check the video out over here. But assuming you already did that, let's go ahead and talk about some of the things you can do with your ECG simulator. All right, so right now we're generating a simple approximately 80 beats per minute ECG waveform. Now, the respiratory rate down here, that's just reading some noise right now because I was moving around the, the cables. But if you want to measure the respiratory rate, you're going to have to make sure you select the correct leads. So depending on what type of patient monitor you're using, it's going to look a little different. So we're going to go into the respiratory settings. We're going to go into lead select, and then we're going to select R-A-L-L. -L. Okay, so after a bit, that's going to give us enough information to determine the respiratory rate or to simulate the respiratory rate. So that's really important. So the respiratory rate is only simulated between the RA and LL leads. So you're going to have to make sure you set up whatever device you're using so that that's correct. Now, different devices choose different leads to default to. So some Space Labs monitors like this one don't default to RALL, but if you use the cubes, they do default to RALL. So it just depends on what type of patient monitor you're using. But most of the times you're able to go into the settings and select the correct leads. All right, so now let's say we want to test the high alarm for our ECG. So if we go to the electrocardiogram menu, we can pull up the alarm limits and we can see what the high limit is currently set to at 120 and the low limit is set to 50. So if we exceed 120 beats per minute, we should get an alarm. Now if we go to our patient simulator, what I want to do is I'm going to flip the first two toggle switches over to the left. And that's going to increase our ECG waveform to around 160 beats per minute. And you can see that the high rate alarm goes off successfully. Okay, now let's say we want to test the low rate alarm. We're just going to flip the first switch over. All right, and you can see that the low rate alarm successfully went off. There's a total of eight different settings that you can have set with your ECG simulator. I'm just going to show you two more. I'm going to so show you the setting for defib and tachycardia. So if we go and set all of these toggle switches to the left side, we're going to simulate defib. All right, now in this case, we're going to just flip over the bottom two switches to the left, the bottom two toggle switches to the left, in order to simulate tachycardia. And you can even see that the tachycardia alarm shows up. One thing you'll note is that different patient monitors have different alarm settings and different ways that they detect tachycardia and BFib. So you may get those alarms to throw, you may not. It's going to depend on how your monitor is doing that calculation. And it's it can be very dependent depending on the model, the make and model of your patient monitor. Another thing you can do with your patient simulator is test the respiratory rate alarms. So for the last couple of tests, I've actually had the alarms off. I just went ahead and turned them on. They're on right now. But for the past couple of tests, they've been off. So they're back on. Now the high alarm is set to 30 and the low alarm is set to six. Now if I go ahead and go to my toggle switches on my patient simulator and I flipped the bottom two over to the left, once again, that's a simulation for tachycardia and you'll notice that the respiratory rate picks up. You can see we have a warning for multiple alarms down here. You have the high rate alarm going here. You also have a run alarm. If you don't want to do multiple alarms at the same time, what you can do is use a different combination on your toggle switches. So you can set this to 
left on the top, right in the middle, and left on the bottom. And what you see here is we have a stable ECG at 80, around 80 beats per minute, but our high rate alarm on our respiratory rate is going off. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and test the low rate alarm, the easiest way to do that is set your toggle switches to right, right, left. It does take a while for the respiratory rate to update its calculation, so you have to be patient. And there we go, the low rate alarm did go off. So as far as I know, this is the only do-it-yourself ECG simulator where you can actually create multiple waveforms and test respiratory rate. We hope you enjoyed the project and let us know if you have any suggestions. So hopefully that gives you some of the basic things that you can do with your patient simulator that you can use to test the patient monitor that you have. Now you can even go in and write your own custom waveforms and your own custom heart rates by going into the code that we've made accessible. So feel free to change it around and experiment with different types of waveforms. You can find additional information about the ECG simulator project, including electrical schematics and Arduino code at the website, htm-workshop.com.